in order to predict the chemical shifts in a wide variety of organic compounds, we start with some benchmark values that are shown here. So if we have a methyl or a methylene or a methine, we have these three chemical shifts as our benchmark values. So for a methyl, it's 0 0.9 parts per million. A methylene is a little bit more deshielded. It's around 1.2 parts per million. And a methine proton will have a chemical shift of around 1.7 parts per million. Then we can use table 15.1 to adjust the chemical shift depending on the proximity to certain functional groups. Table 15.1 shows us the effect of neighboring functional groups on chemical shifts. If I take a look at the example of ethanol, I have these two methylene protons which are alpha to this hydroxyl. And what the table tells us is that the oxygen from an alcohol or an ether will increase a chemical shift by 2.5 parts per million. So we start with the baseline value of 1.2 parts per million for the methylene group and then we add 2.5 to it from the oxygen of the alcohol. So 1.2 plus 2.5 gives us 3.7 parts per million. If you run the proton NMR spectrum on ethanol, what you'll see is that these two protons actually come out at 3.7 parts per million. So you can see that it is a very good predictor. If the two methylene protons are next to the oxygen of an ester, the effect is to increase the chemical shift by three parts per million. So you can see that in this ester here, these two methylene protons that are right next to the oxygen of the ester, we start with the baseline of 1.2 parts per million, but then we add three parts per million to it, and we get 4.2 parts per million. If you run the NMR spectrum on this ester, what you'll see is the actual chemical shift for those methylene protons is 4.1 parts per million. Again, you can see how the table is very effective at predicting chemical shifts. The effect on beta protons is about one-fifth the effect on alpha protons. So if I go back to the example of ethanol, so I have these two protons here, which are alpha to the oxygen of the alcohol. But if I look at these three protons on the methyl group, which are beta to the oxygen of the alcohol, I add one-fifth of 2.5. So for my methyl protons, I would start with the baseline of 0 0.9 parts per million, and I would add 0 0.5 parts per million to it. And what I would get is a prediction of 1.4 parts per million. The same rationale applies to carbonyl groups, which are found in ketones, aldehydes, and esters, but the deshielding effect isn't as great. So if the methylene protons are alpha to the carbon of a carbonyl, we only add one part per million to the chemical shift. So if I take a look at this ketone here, here's my methylene. I start with my baseline chemical shift of 1.2 parts per million, and I add 1.0 parts per million to it, and I get a prediction of 2.2 parts per million. The actual chemical shift of those methylene protons is 2.4 parts per million. For the three methyl protons, which are beta to the carbonyl, I would add one-fifth of one part per million. So I would start with my baseline value of 0 0.9 parts per million for the methyl group, and I would add one-fifth of one, which is 0 0.2 parts per million, which would give me a prediction of 1.1 parts per million. The chemical shift of a proton is also sensitive to diamagnetic effects that result from the motion of nearby pi electrons. For example, consider what happens when benzene is placed in a strong magnetic field. The magnetic field causes the pi electrons to circulate, and this flow of electrons creates an induced local magnetic field. The result is what we call diamagnetic anisotropy, which means that different regions of space are characterized by different magnetic field strengths. So what you can see from the diagram is that the locations inside the ring are characterized by a local magnetic field that opposes the external magnetic field, while the locations outside of the ring are characterized by a local magnetic field that adds to the external field. The protons that are connected to the ring are permanently positioned outside of the ring, and as a result of that, they experience a stronger magnetic field. These protons experience the external magnetic field plus the local magnetic field. 
The overall effect is a deshielding one and therefore the protons are shifted downfield. Aromatic protons produce a signal in the neighborhood of around 7 parts per million. You can see that inside the benzene ring, the induced magnetic field goes against the applied magnetic field. But on the outside of the ring, the effect is opposite. The induced magnetic field goes in the same direction as the applied magnetic field. The net result is that the protons on the outside of the ring have an increased magnetic field. And if they're experiencing an increased magnetic field, there's going to be a greater difference in energy between their alpha and beta spin states, and therefore they will have a higher chemical shift, or be shifted downfield. As a result of diamagnetic anisotropy, the six protons highlighted in red experience a greater magnetic field and require more energy to spin flip. Again, the net result is deshielding, so aromatic protons appear in the neighborhood of around 7 parts per million. So the signal that we see here just above 7 parts per million represents the five aromatic protons highlighted in red. Table 15.2 covers chemical shifts for protons in different electronic environments. It is necessary to be familiar with the chemical shift values for these common types of protons. I won't spend a lot of time going over these chemical shifts in this video, but it would be wise to memorize these all as they will be very useful in solving NMR spectroscopy problems.